God is good. God is good. All the time. Ain't it? Yes, sir. Anyway, what was Mike Dickinson thinking? Honestly, I don't know what he's thinking about inviting Merle Rutledge to Richmond, to the Capitol, where Northam's at, where the swamp, where politicians and the rest go to mingle and do backside deals <laughs> and bend over to whoever is paying them all. The ones that are selling out, giving up our rights, saying basically, let's compromise, let's go with it. Let's figure out how we're going to tell our districts that we can't get the job done. That seems like the norm of the Republican Party and those elected officials up in Richmond and the rest of them that's kissing their ass. See, let me get this straight, people. Mike Dickinson is inviting me to Richmond, Virginia to blow the house up, meaning to raise the temperature. Basically, he doesn't want the same business as usual in Richmond. The reason why he invited me to go ahead and make an epic speech because Richmond ain't listening to all those who I just mentioned before. They're not. Right now, Richmond has basically showed itself that you can't trust nobody. The reason is because they're all getting paid off or they're making the excuses to make sure that their district doesn't see through their smoke and mirrors. Right now, the politicians is not our friends, people. They are not. The fact is, it's the grassroots on the ground that's been fighting for free out there knocking on doors. The ones who've been volunteering, making the phone calls. Those who go all over the Commonwealth of Virginia trying to get support, trying to gather as much signatures as they possibly can so their candidates can be on the ballot. The problem is after a while, by you volunteering and working for somebody, you will eventually find out who that person really is. And it's disappointing, isn't it? You can ask Yunklin and Snyder about that right now. The fact is, I'm coming to Richmond to raise hell and leave. Period. The fact is, Richmond and those Democrats and liberals gave up our capital and they didn't even bat an eye. They told the police to stand down, destroy Richmond, have a free fall, and allow law-abiding citizens to be in fear and subjected to anything that the criminals wanted. That is completely, completely, completely unacceptable. At this time period, we want to make sure we instill confidence back in the city of Richmond. Common sense. Letting you know it's time to take the mask off. It's time to stop being controlled. It's time to start fighting back and start letting them assholes out there in Richmond know that we are no longer playing that game because we are the American people and we are sick of it. See, Richmond has become not Republican or Democrat. It has became pure kiss ass. Pure blue balls. And that's the problem. And now they need a Republican general. And all due respect to Lapena, I love him. He's a colonel. And I love his service. But it's time for a general to come to Richmond. And get it in shape. And make sure people know. Hey. There's going to be a new day. You no longer have to worry about your school. And your friends. Being indoctrinated. It's a new day. You don't no longer have to worry about pedophiles. Having grooming sessions. At your local public schools. It's a new day. You don't have to worry about. Somebody who thinks that they are a woman today going up into your bathroom because they think that it's okay. It's a new day. And we're definitely not giving up our guns. No, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. We will never become Venezuela. Ever. And Virginia looks like it's on its way. If we continue to elect 
the same people, we will get the same results. Their message is the same. It has gotten rejected every single time. Now, the only person in this race that can change up Richmond and you can be confident about it without question is Merle Rutledge. And the way you can find that out is asking any politician how you feel about Merle Rutledge. And they're going to give you an anti-politician message. They're going to say he's a bad dude. Yeah, he has made changes and he has never been elected. He can't be bought off. We tried. The newspapers hate him because of what he exposes in their localities that they should have caught wind of a long time ago. And he doesn't give a damn about the establishment. He's not going to be told what to do. He's not going to stand down. He's not going to stay silent. And he's not going to play by their rules. Nah, that ain't going to happen. The whole point of the Richmond trip is basically the same. Republicans are tired of standing down. Period. Conservatives are saying, we are tired of you giving up our churches and increasing our taxes and basically raping our grandchildren without even having a bit of decency to say that you can at least take responsibility. The reason is because nobody's going to be able to take responsibility once they threw with your ass after it happens. Because right now they're trying to basically open up the cell block doors, open up the penitentiaries, and make everything in Virginia basically a modern day prison in a sea of blue. People, it's bigger than race people what we are fighting for. You could go to your gas pumps right now and see that. You could go to your grocery store and see that. You don't think people ain't cursing when they see those price increases and they find out where it came from? You think people ain't pissed off when they find out they're getting evicted and they worked a job for 20 years and they only lost their job because the governor decided to shut down Virginia and shut down their lives? You think they're happy about that? Do you think the police is really, really happy right now? You talking about the fun them? You saying basically do your job while you talk trash about us and you expect us to have some good feelings. You expect us to want to be on the job that day. You want us to give up our lives for today and you can't respect us right now while we live it. You think they happy with that? Really? Do you think the inner cities is happy? You think the mothers and fathers and the brothers and sisters are happy? When somebody dies for senseless violence. And then you have the nerve to go after the police who have to solve the crime and solve that murder investigation. But you also think the families that have to bury their loved ones is happy right now? Do you think the opiate epidemic, you think people are happy right now? Seeing drugs, meth, and cocaine, and heroin destroy families. You think they okay with that? I'm talking about America right now. That's what's going on. You think people are okay with the Keystone Pipeline cutting thousands and thousands of jobs? You think they're okay with that? No? See, we got real problems here in America. And I, I'm sorry. Everything I mentioned, politician, your race, or your gender, or how much of a coward you are, is going to solve that? Absolutely not. You think... The same people who had the opportunity to make change decided not to. They going to solve that? No. It takes somebody who don't have absolute no care for a Republican or the Democratic establishment. I'm, I'm a Republican because of the creed. Don't get it twisted. I'm here because I believe in free speech. I believe in the right of assembly. And the right to peacefully protest. I believe. In making sure. That the government doesn't take all my money. This is slavery part two. You're making money and you're making less right now. And you know it. No matter who you are. 
Everything has gone up in price. And right now you feel like some people's personalities is is the problem right now. Right now, nobody has a good personality with how our government is being ran right now. No, uh, not one person. Most of that COVID relief right now goes to people overseas and other countries right now. What does that have to do with America first? I'm an American first co candidate. Uh, excuse me, I don't always have this perfect speech and I don't always use the perfect language. I wasn't meant to do that. I wasn't meant to be polite. I was meant to get the job done. See, what I'm talking about right now is deep. Because this is the America right now that everybody's pissed off with, no matter who you are, with your race, no matter what. Whether you're wealthy, whether you're poor, whether you're middle class. Middle class right now is not comfortable right now. They're either going to end up having to become rich or they have a stronger likelihood of becoming poor. And they work hard to try to at least have a decent life that they can say hard work meant something. Right now, everybody's hard work don't mean nothing to nobody right now for those bureaucrats. See, the people who are, I walk on the same block or on the same street and I see all the time whether it's homeless or people just walking to work or our kids going to school and vice versa, they are very worried about the America right now and they mad that they voted for it. See, 1400 ain't going to cover barely anything when it's mostly the debt. Most of your tax refunds right now is mostly to debt. Normally, you have that for a vacation or investment or whatever you have you to what you call guns and butter. You know what I'm saying? Butter melts away, that's gone. Guns is your house, your car, your ability to make more money. You know, that's where it's at right there. That's the guns you want. You want the guns also to protect yourself and defend yourself. I know that. But what I'm talking about, that's why it's more to the gun argument than just what people have it out to be. It ain't just about whether it's gun control or just gun rights. It's about us having our guns to protect ourselves, to continue our wealth, to continue our ability to take care of our kids without the government's interference. These are guns. Keeping the family bond strong. That's guns. Being able to make sure that your kids have a future. That's guns. Butter melts away. That basically says, hey, short term, it looks good, but we're going to take that away so easily because we can melt it away. That's what they're doing with our history. That's what they're doing with our churches. That's what they're doing with the real crimes that's going on here in America. They're trying to melt it away so you don't see behind that darkness of that liberal monster. Period. I've been behind that darkness and following it through everywhere it goes. The thing is, it's harder to find out about corruption when they solace the voices that are the whistleblowers that we need to know. Because right now, we're finding out about things too late. Our current GOP, our current Democrat Party is telling us too late about what's really wrong here in America because they still focus on protecting the politicians, not protecting the people. If you wonder why fundraising is down, because people, ordinary ones on the couch that no longer go to committee meetings, those are the ones who wake up on election day and just vote. They don't even want to be caught up in the swamp and all that drama. That's because they are no longer caught up in the lies, in the scandals, in the corruption, and people judging, being Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. I'm sorry, you was judging me the way the Republican Party was judging me and excluding me? Imagine what they were doing to others. I don't care if you're white, black, or whatever. You don't like a problem. That's what it is. We are a problem. The American people, the patriots, the militias, everybody who believes in fighting for America for free. We are the problem to these damn politicians. And they're going to say, hey, you think you can exclude me is the problem? You think that is the priority for America right now? America is starving. But their priority is basically saying, I'm still worried about perception. I'm sorry, every city, every single county, every single town, 
can't be worried about perception right now. It's been going downhill regardless of who's been running the country or who's been running our state government. Because the politicians have compromised our American freedoms and values for their wallet. They became Capital One, not America first. That's why I'm going to Richmond to the Capitol. That's why I'm speaking the way I do. Because it doesn't matter who. I have seen people of all backgrounds. When you are telling the truth, you become a problem for the government. No matter who you are. They already made Jesus look like he was the worst person on earth in this world. And they're doing it again. They're trying to crucify our Lord and Savior right now. That's what's going on right now here in America. And people ain't paying attention. But I hope people do. I hope they do. But since everybody said I had to go to Northern Virginia to turn this country, turn this state, to help in that process, to put a voice to the grassroots that's out there working hard, sweating, going to all the antics that the Antifa and BLM and the mob do. they the ones on the street dealing with it. The candidates got protection. They are out there putting their neck on the line fighting for us. Real leaders, they recognize that. I have yet to hear a speech right now from any candidate recognizing the grassroots on the ground working hard and telling their story. Telling them what they're going through to get them elected. That's why I'm really pissed off at DM Gate. He conceded our elections before any candidate in Virginia conceded. And he has the nerve to exclude me. See, I'm a threat to the real swamp because I'm a real American. It doesn't matter whether it was me. Joe Blow on the street, a construction worker, or somebody who is a janitor. The reason why we are a threat, because we know everything that we've been through was caused by y'all. And y'all don't want that story out there, but guess what? That's the real story. It's just like a good family. It's always somebody covering up for your bullshit. Wrong is still wrong, no matter where or how you say it or how you try to sugarcoat it. Wrong is wrong. But if the Republican Party wants to win back Virginia, it's got to go through Northern Virginia and it's got to go through the ordinary working man. I'm like, people are so called up politicians and butter right now. Butter voters. Because those voters are bored and dead tired of same old, same old. So they just support you because Okay, you look like you may be the best one, but they can't even say why you're the best for the job. And if you ask them, did you get to know the other candidates? No, I haven't had a chance to. That's because the party has been spending so much time trying to make sure these type of candidates aren't around. Because they're so worried about fundraising and basically lining their pockets. That doesn't have nothing to do with somebody trying to save their guns save their church for having to be forced to accept things that go against them. And also, basically, their right to be affiliated and support whoever they want to without being called terrorists or um, whatever you want to call it, Trump supporters. The fact is, they're crucifying us for who we support because it doesn't fit in the Swamp's plans. Well, the election rate, it was rigged way before the November elections, and way before 2021. They was rigging the election against President Trump in his first year in office. All of that was part of the plan. And right now, each person who supported President Trump in D.C., they went against him in D.C., and they went against him during the time frame he needed them the most. Our, our country needed them the most. The reason why it wasn't really a real fight Given all the stuff that was going on, from election integrity, whether it was protecting citizens against rioters, or whether it was protecting history, or protecting our schools, or opening up America, because President Trump was telling an inconvenient truth 
that this is really what's going on here in America. They tried to paint it as fake news, but President Trump was really giving out the true news, the truth, the deep state, all these people who was backdooring them. You know what I'm saying? Realistically, it was so many Julius Caesars around President Trump. I'm surprised he had the patience. That's maybe the only thing I'm shocked at. But I was so glad, just like most of America, when he was telling those politicians and those reporters, y'all could go straight to hell. See, you see, when you have a leadership responsibility and one that is just as big as the presidency or being governor of Virginia, you got everybody watching every single thing you do. And I'm so glad it's being done now because a lot of these people would not know about unless the newspapers right now are reporting it or it's online or somebody uh, that's a friend is tagging them to it. We are finding out realistically where the problems is at. And whether you want to hear it or not, you're looking at D.C. You're looking at your state capitals right now. See, they're not used to that. Now, they are so scared, now they're putting up fences around this capital that wasn't there before. Because you're seeing them for who they are. And the one thing I like about the fences being around the capital and around the D.C. swamp, I'm like, now, y'all see what it feels like to be prisoners. Now you see looking at what it feels like for people to be paying attention to how you do your job. Now you got to build up security around you. Now you got to figure out a way to keep people away from you. But before you was okay with it because the people didn't know what you was doing. If the politicians in both parties don't wake up, trust me, that fence ain't going to hold the American people away for too long. Because the very people you bashing and trying to fund, hey, they may not protect you. When it comes down to that. So be mindful of what leadership means. And this goes for whether it's the GOP head. I don't care who it is. Whether it's governor or another politician. You're going to remember the American people in my race. I'm going to do it well. And I'm going to fight for them. And they're going to see it. They're going to see that they come first. Yeah. Because you can look at all their donors and all that other stuff. You know, I don't take special interest money. I don't need it. I back you because I have a reason to. You don't have to pay me for that. See, people got to get out of paying people to do their damn job. They already getting taxpayer money right now. We are paying them. They don't need nothing else. The reason why they can't legislate for us because they are so busy spending most of their time legislating for everything they ain't about us. The legals come in this country and the rest, they're trying to purge America, whether you white, black, or whoever, American citizens. This is a war that's going on right now in our country, and the invasion is already happening. Look at the numbers at a daily rate of Two years. And the numbers is increasing right now. Another country is going to be America. Because they tried to break down the wall. Which everybody warned. Everybody about. Illegal immigration. People coming into the country. Without doing it the right way. After a while. We get outnumbered. So what election integrity is going to be then. Because they they would be the ones writing the law. Because we got too many knee-jerk politicians that live in fear. They already gave up the monuments, the churches, and more. They gave up their soul and their heart. Trust me, they willing to give up everything. You know, so that oath, that was a lot to swear and protect people. You know, protect the United States Constitution. All of that. What are they doing right now? Are they protecting it? No, they are giving it up piece by piece. And you need somebody who's aware of all of this 
so we can fight sooner than later. That's what they are worried about with my campaign. I was having people fight sooner than later because I saw the big picture. My legacy is based off of that. When I say rags to riches story or whatever it may be, that's true. When I say I wasn't perfect, that's true. But everything that they're trying to do to me is only making me better. So I can only appreciate what the Republican Party is trying to do with my campaign by trying to snub me. Because I'm like, I wouldn't appreciate this fight unless I had the obstacles. And God already told me that's, that's what's going to happen. If that's going to bother you, you don't need to be in this race. If they could break you while you campaigning, what do you think is going to happen when you get to Richmond? That's why it's so important for me to be fighting for the American people and fighting things my way. Because I'm letting them know they can't break me. They can't break the American people. They can't break our bond. We can let them. That's why they need the division. Because when both sides ain't talking, that's when everybody can assume and just put in their side of the story. That's why I'm telling Democrats and Republicans, find out both sides of the story. In the middle of it, the truth is the politicians are screwing everybody. That's how I win Northern Virginia. That's how I win back Virginia. That's how Republicans win nationwide. We stop worrying about a name, the swamp, anything that's a politician, anything that's been there, consider that term limits. We need the construction worker. We need the blue-collar police officer. We need the grandfather that bleed in discipline and passing it down to their loved ones. We need everybody right now that works hard with their hands right now and don't mind rolling up their sleeves and getting a little dirty for their country. That's what we need in Richmond. That's what we need in D.C. We will never have these problems. Because all those people save money. All those people know not to go too far. They know their restraints. They know how to protect their rights. And they are not giving it up for the next dollar bill from China. It's inexcusable. Right now, we locked down, shut down, and nobody's going after the people who did this to us. But they're going after us, the American people. We don't want suffering right now. And they don't want you to, to start thinking about who started these problems. How did we get to this point? Because when you find out the true picture of things, it's ugly. And so ugly that the American people may not be able to handle it. No, it's not that. The politicians are scared of what the American people find out. So that's why I'm the biggest threat in this race. I'm aware of this all. So our fellow patriots, all we're trying to do, black, white, Hispanic, wake you up and say, hey, we need to sit down and have this conversation. Because, hey, we are paying more, you paying more, we ain't making more. We making less and going through this. This is further and kicking you while you're down. Right now, they ain't t painting the real picture of American streets right now because right now they're scared of it. The reporters don't even want to go out into Richmond at nighttime where it used to be people jogging peacefully to the parks and looking at history and not worrying about somebody waiting around the corner. Not to rob them because they're being greedy, Robbing them because they're starving and desperate and don't have nothing else left. So guess what? They are trying to take something that they normally wouldn't take. And that's how I look at America and fellow patriots look at America. People are desperate and just taking anything. That's how Biden got elected. They were like, hey, I need any dollar. That's why President Trump said this is the poison pill. You going after people desperate and they're going to make desperate decisions. Biden was a desperate decision. I said it.